And let's get started. Welcome to the MIT Executive MBA Sustainability Panel. We're all really excited to bring you our first ever panel focused specifically on the sustainability initiatives within our program and are so glad that you could join us. My name is Gracie Delore. I'm the Assistant Director of Marketing on the Executive Degree Programs team, and I'm joined by Tom Little, our Marketing Assistant, and Mike McCauley, our Senior Associate Director of Marketing and Recruiting. So today's agenda includes the MIT EMBA at a glance, where I'll go through a brief rundown of what you can expect from our program. Um, we'll then talk about sustainability at MIT, which Tom will take over from me. And then we will go through a Q&A session with some of our alumni. So if you have any questions, you can just pop them into the Q&A section. We will get to them either in the chat directly or we will address them live um, tonight. So let's kick things off with a brief look at the MIT Executive MBA, because that's all, that's why you're all here, right? So for context, MIT evolved as a preeminent leader in the fields of science and technology. Today, the Institute includes five schools, science, engineering, humanities, arts, and social science, architecture and planning, and since 1914, a school of management. So MIT, MIT Sloan, and the Executive MBA are all mission-driven. The mission is central to everything that we do here. The focus of the mission is a differentiator for the Institute, the school, and especially when it comes to your candidacy and how you connect with the mission. So you can read the mission of MIT here at the top, but um, I always like to read the mission of MIT Sloan, which is to develop principled, innovative leaders who improve the world and to generate ideas that advance the management practice. So the MIT EMBA makes a very special contribution to the Institute because our students in our cohorts are able to immediately put what they learn on the weekends when they're on campus, which we'll get to, um, next um, and put them into practice once they return back to work come Monday morning. So um, the MIT EMBA is a 20 month program that meets in person over 26 weekends. And we consider a weekend as a full day on Fridays and Saturdays, which you will come to class um, on campus, Cambridge, Massachusetts, every two to three weekends. Um, there are also four one week long modules spread strategically across the 20 months of the program, including the first and last full weeks of the program. Additionally, there is a week long international trip part of a course called GoLab, which takes place in mid March of your final year so our 23s just went through that. And upon graduating, you will receive the same MBA degree as a two year traditional MBA, as well as our Sloan Fellows MBA that's our um, full time one year program. Importantly, most importantly, the course requirements and hours are the same as those for students across all MBA programs at Sloan. So you are putting in that same amount of work, even though, yes, you will also keep your full-time job. So here's a look at the stats of the class of 2023. So you can take a look here. Um, some things that I love to call out on um, during these events. So our students have an average of 17 years of work experience. Um, so you'll get a huge range of people from all roles in their companies of varying sizes. We do have people from smaller companies all the way up to companies that have, you know, 10,000 or more people. Um, we do have 67% of this class uh, who are non-local, meaning they are traveling in from outside of Massachusetts. 50% are of international origin. And the common differ, um, not the common differentiator, because that's not it. <laughs> the common denominator, that's the word that I was looking for, is that everyone is employed full time. That is super, super important. Um, for this program, because again, we really want you to take everything that you're learning when you're on campus, um, not just from our faculty, but from your peers, and put that right into action once you get back to your um, job after that weekend is done. So each year we assemble a diverse class that includes a broad spectrum of industries. Our current class has 21% of people who are in the healthcare space, as well as strong representation from software and technology, banking and pharma. That said, 
34% of our cohort come from other industries, including manufacturing, the nonprofit space, entertainment, government, you know, we do have veterans um, and former active military. So diversity of industry is super important to us as well, since again, um, just reiterating, reiterating the fact that you are learning just as much from your peers as you are from our faculty on campus and our alum will um, definitely get into that a little bit more. So at this point, I'll actually turn it over to Tom to take us through sustainability at, at MIT. Thanks, Chrissy. So let's transition into sustainability at MIT, starting with what exactly is sustainability? Sustainability is not just about the environment. Sustainability is the crucial harmony between healthy environments, thriving communities, and ethical businesses and institutions, all working together to create equitable economies that fulfill human needs. Our systems are interconnected, which is why we believe a sustainable planet is also a just planet one that takes into account our environment, in addition to socioeconomic and personal well-being, equity, and political activity and engagement. Sustainability at its core is about people and the world we want for ourselves and future generations. And all of this is from the MIT Sloan Sustainability Initiative. And what is the Sloan Sustainability Initiative? Founded in 2006, their mission is to provide the best education, apply academic rigor to real world problems, and empower leaders everywhere to act professionally and personally so that humans and nature can thrive for generations to come. The initiative supports degree coursework, executive education, and research projects, as well as having several co-curricular opportunities open to all Sloan students, which includes executive MBA students. These include weekly sustainability speaker series, sustainability researcher lunches, student clubs and case competitions, as well as the MIT Sustainability Summit. And you can learn more at their website, which you'll see at the bottom of the slide. And the leadership of the Sloan Sustainability Initiative all have ties to the executive MBA. First, the director of the initiative, Jason Jay. Jason's research focuses on how people navigate the tensions inherent in the quest for sustainability, with a specific focus on owning families, ESG measurements, and systemic, systemic investing. Jason teaches business strategies for sustainable business, which is a potential course for the MBA students pursuing the sustainability certificate, which I'll talk about a little later. The Director of Policy and Engagement, Bethany Patton, is an EMBA alum. She leads the MIT Climate Pathways Project and the initiative's engagement with policymakers. She develops learning curriculum for master's and executive level students and teaches sustainability, sustainable business lab with sessions focused on problem formulation, continuous improvement, and change management for sustainability. Roberto Regabon teaches learning in a global context and advanced applied macroeconomics to EMBA students. His research is in international economics, monetary economics, and development economics, focusing on the causes of balance of payments crises, financial crises, and the propagation of them across countries. And lastly, John Sturman, he teaches system dynamics to the EMBA students. His research centers on improving decision-making in complex systems, which includes corporate strategy and operations, energy policy, public health, environmental sustainability, and climate change. Now, a brief look at some curriculum highlights. These courses listed are in the Executive MBA schedule and have some sort of sustainability element or the op opportunity for a sustainability project. LIM and System Dynamics are core courses that have sustainability elements woven in, and you can also choose to take macroeconomics as an elective in the spring of your second year. The rest of the courses listed here have the possibility of a sustainability project. And this option becomes particularly important if you're looking to obtain the sustainability certificate, which you can complete requirements with only taking one course outside of the EMBA weekend schedule. As you can see, the three required courses are LIM and System Dynamics, which again are core courses. All EMBA students take these. 
And then you have the opportunity to take either sustainable business lab or business strategies for a sustainable future. Then you have two elective courses, one of which can be advanced applied macroeconomics, which is in the EMBA weekend schedule. Then there are two listed here that have previously been offered as a distance learning opportunity to EMBA students to help complete the certificate. We, while we can't necessarily, um, while we can't necessarily say that these will be courses you're offered, we can say that during January executive electives, we do tend to have some sort of sustainability courses. This January, we had a course called DEI and ESG data disclosure in the future of woke capitalism, which would fit. And action learning projects in your courses can also count towards this certificate. And with that being said, I'll turn back over to Chrissy, who will introduce our panelists for the night. Almost forgot to unmute. Thanks, Tom. So I'm thr so thrilled to introduce um, Barbara Clay and Kenny Lee, both from the class of 2020. Welcome, and thank you so much for joining us this evening, this afternoon, um, et cetera. Um, so can you sh each introduce yourself, share a bit about your current role and how you use sustainability in your career today, just so people can get a taste for um, you know what they can potentially expect. Also, too, just a reminder for attendees, if you have any questions, Questions that you would like to ask um, about the program, about Barbara and Kenny's experience in particular, just feel free to drop that in the Q&A section as they are chatting. Um, and Barbara, let's kick things off with you. Oh, I think your audio is... No, Kenny, let's kick it to you first while Barbara figures out her audio. Sure, okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Cool. All right, Barbara, always saving your bacon. By the way, Barbara and I, we're, we're classmates, so we're, we're friends here. Um, mm -hmm. Kenny Lee, I'm a co-founder and a CEO of iGen, and we are a uh, robotics company uh, building robots for the farm. Um, and our mission is to decarbonize agriculture, which accounts for about a quarter to one third of global carbon emissions um, by reducing harmful pesticides in our food and also reducing uh, the use of diesel fuel uh, through management practices. And I should ramble longer for, for Barbara, because uh, <laughs> Barbara, I don't see her anymore. <laughs> uh, I, I'll also add the fact that um, this, this company was started in 2021 after I graduated from um, the EMBA program. And I knew I was, I was not into uh, sustainability or climate tech uh, mm -hmm. before this company. My previous role was a cybersecurity company. I, I was also a co-founder um, at a cybersecurity tech startup uh, before I started this one. So think about that transition and you might have questions about around that. No, that's that's good. I see Barbara is connecting to audio. Actually, just since you mentioned it, um, how did you, when did you realize that you wanted to tr make that transition to sustainability? And, you know, I I think that's that's interesting because I do think that might be a common factor in, across industries where, yeah. you know, we're we're thinking about these things way more than I think you know generations did prior. Um, mm -hmm. So what was that shift for you? Yeah, it was it was uh, well actually Barbara I just saw her connect maybe I'll just pause. Barbara are you? Yeah, let's test your audio, Barbara. Can you hear? Me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. So Barbara, we'll definitely go back to you. But yeah, Kenny, um, just. Yeah, what, what was that transition? Um, there was a class that was that Tom actually uh, listed out. It's called System Dynamics. Mm -hmm. And an amazing professor, his name is uh, Professor John Sturman. He gives a very impassioned uh, class about intro to system dynamics and uh, using climate change as a, as a, uh, as a model. Uh, as, a, as an example of how to think about system dynamics. And system dynamics is 
just if you think about feedback loops and how everything is interconnected, that's the, sort of the, the big idea. And um, at the end of, I believe, of, of his series of talks, he basically challenges you. It's like, all right, what are you going to do about it uh, mm -hmm. as leaders and future leaders? And then it was at that moment I said, damn it. All right, I'm going to do something about it. And then okay. so I put my foot down. And it, that was, I didn't know what, I didn't, I, I, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew that I was going to do something. And I, I remember uh, uh, writing in my notebook, just, just do it, the Nike slogan. And then I underlined it. And, uh, here oh, I am. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank, thank you for sharing that. All right, Barbara, now that we got your audio back and you've rejoined us, um, let's go to you, uh, you know, introduce yourself, share us, uh, tell us about your current role and how um, your sustainability experience at um, throughout the EMBA ties into what you do now. Sure. Um, so I am a lawyer, which is not, uh, I'm, I'm like the, in, in all the categories, others <laughs> so, uh, of, of the, of the folks, um, at, in the class. And, um, I've been a, I've been a lawyer in, uh, New York and Connecticut for 25 years. Um, I started my career uh, in environmental engineering, I have a bachelor's and a master's, and I went to law school and got my environmental law certificate. So I've been really passionate about environmental issues for a long time. However, <laughs> I will say that I did the typical New York corporate um, law down in the city, um, which, which got me into energy. I, I, I helped clients build projects um, before it was very popular. Um, I took a turn at MasterCard, learned a lot of finance. That's what intrigued, uh, intrigued me uh, into getting my MBA because I realized in order to help my clients, I really needed to understand. They don't teach you. Most, most people go to law school, go to law school to avoid math. And so <laughs> I wasn't. I love math, but um, you, don't, you don't learn a lot of math in law school. So um, at the time that I went, I was full time working, obviously, and I was attending. I was at a energy company that did a lot of green uh, backed energy. And while I was at the, um, during the program to my surprise, the company had um, bidding offers and it was purchased. And so uh, in the middle of the class, I found myself uh, really towards the end um, to, to have a company that was sold. And so I started my own um, consulting company called Good Counsel. And I focus on, I'm acting general counsel right now via renewables, but I also have smaller clients that do um, the, uh, all the renewables, the, the solar, the geo, um, geothermal. And um, I would say what has helped me is uh, for MIT, it's all about what is the problem you're trying to solve? They are really drumming into you. Like, how do you solve problems for people? And, and that's what it's about every day. And it will surprise you. Like if you, as a green warrior for 25 years, it's like fights over equity. It's like the construction permit you can't get. It's, it's not like, it's not all the mm -hmm. sustainability you think it is, but that's how you're pushing the envelope by constantly helping people solve problems. And you bring such different methods. Like I settled a class action and I'm like, let's, let's build a decision tree. Let's like see the probability if we go this way or that way. I mean, it's just this new way of thinking that you are like, you're a leader at the table all the time, like trying to help people make better decisions. So I've been nothing but happy. Um, some of the folks that I used to work with are like, you're like another person. And like, it's a compliment. So like, it just brings something different to the table now. That's, that's awesome. And so considering that you have been, I love that you put it as um, a green warrior, like for, you know, your entire career, was there a moment throughout the program for you that either allowed you to think about sustainability when it comes to your role in a new way or, or um, is, was there a class or a moment that really were really truly like solidified? Okay. Like I'm, I'm all in on like this work like was there a moment of like that for you well very similar to um kenny and it's funny my boss the ceo of the company at the time uh, that allowed me to go to mit he uh he had a, uh, his mba from cornell and he didn't mm -hmm. get into mit so he's always asking me about mit and i would tell him i'm Love like that. i told him i'm like i'm taking this first. yeah it was he was like so 
so supportive, so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And he was like, he's like, what the hell are you? Because I, I would stay late and study there because it's easier than trying to do it at home. He's like, what the hell are you studying? Because it's, I think MIT is very different because I, I could have gone to Cornell because I was closer to Cornell because I lived down here. And mm -hmm. I sort of said, for me, I had enough Wall Street and I wanted something very much more mission-based and more scientific and technology. And so it was funny when he said that to me, he's like, what the hell are you learning? And I'm like, well, system dynamics. And I was drawing circles, Kenny will laugh because he knows what I'm talking about. Like, And to me, it just changed the way I think about mm -hmm. um, systems. I mean, funny enough, and Kenny can, can chime in on this, we actually studied uh, pandemics, epidemics, as a system dynamics, like four months before the outbreak of COVID. And I was able to watch the TV. I was literally screaming, call it, call it to the world, um, whatever the world uh, health organization was, because the math behind it was like, this is, this is, it's gotten out of control, you know? So you just, you just have these like mathematical models and mental models that allow you to look at things and assess things much, much better. So for me, system dynamics is like, you know, there are, there are positive inputs and negative inputs that like, you just start thinking about how things change. And it's just been, I think about it every day. So. Awesome. Thank you. And I think that's, that's so interesting. Cause obviously, you know, I, I think anytime anyone says that they're the class of 2020, you, you automatically think of the pandemic, but then now like with that added context that you're getting in, you know, your systems dynamics course, which like, I think on, you just wouldn't inherently think about things. I don't know, but that that's all super fascinating to me. Um, so can you, um, and maybe Kenny will kick this back to you to start, um, talk a little bit about your experience getting the sustainability certificate, um, you know, maybe like what courses that you, you took, um, just to give folks that are here some insight into, you know, how you, like, you know, what you did to work through that in, along with all the other requirements that you also had to complete for just you yeah. know yeah. by the way this if you here it is yeah you just work work for this uh little sweater like this is i'm so proud of it and this is pure coincidence i wear this regularly i i forgot that uh that i even had this on until i looked at myself in zoom um the courses that i took okay so there is definitely core sustainability related courses that you can take, including sustainability lab. Um, but what I did was after that moment, you know, I'm, I'm like an obsessive, like OCD type of guy, like every lens, every class that I took was bent toward that goal of like getting me, helping me understand. So some of the most impactful kind of ideas um, wasn't just sustainability, right? Because it, I mean, those are going to be geared toward that, but uh, a lot of classes like microeconomics and learning, relearning from, uh, I was uh, from the early college days about like externalities and negative externalities and, and how do you calculate that and uh, life cycle analysis. How do you look at someone's books and like, uh, uh, like a 10 K and, and, and kind of, uh, tease out all of uh, the details around how sustainable a uh, sustainable uh, company is. You know, I took all of those lessons, you know, from every single class that, uh, that was available to us. In addition to that, I, uh, not only did I do the sustainability in, uh, certificate, I also pursued the data analytics. Is, is that what it's called? Uh, data analytics uh, certificate as well, which you have to take more classes on top of that. Um, and the final project that is required to do that also had a sustainability angle. So I used this, I, I asked the professors, can I use the same project and apply for data as well as sustainability? Not only that, I, I don't know if this is cheating, but uh, OLAB, which is organizational lab, um, I also took a sustainability angle to it and then did something mm -hmm. on the recycling. So 
Uh, there's so many opportunities if you're really kind of, if you're zeroed in a specific topic that you want to kind of dive into, that you can play and explore and tackle similar problems from different angles and different uh, lenses. Well, and Barbara, how, how, for, how was that for you? Was it similar, a little bit different? Absolutely. I took the angle of energy. I'm very passionate about it and sort of um, people not in energy don't understand energy. So um, uh, in a lot of the classes, you get paired up with other groups, like a group of four or five. And one group I was paired up with, um, there was four of us, an, a, an architect, a doctor, <laughs> it's like a joke going into the bar, an architect, a doctor, a lawyer, and like a, like a technology software person. And we each had to kind of pick a topic that we wanted to talk about. And then we shared and I was like, oh, I was really angry <laughs> in Florida, like where the sunniest place it is, there's like no solar because a certain big company that I will name, um, it, who I've worked for in their bed, like they just don't want solar because they want you to use their electricity. And they're like, what? I'm like, well, I'm really busy. Let's not pick my topic, okay? Because <laughs> like, let's pick your topic. And the, and the, all of those were highly, highly educated people didn't really understand their energy bill and sort of the monopoly. And uh, it's just, and you, so you learn from each other. And so I selfishly pick a lot of times like solar and renewables. And, you know, the, uh, it just happened to be pretty interesting for groups. And we ended up picking my topic a lot of time. And I, I got to learn a lot from others. So I think Kenny's right. Like you can take those classes and they encourage you it, to like take what you're learning and apply it to like what you're really passionate about. Um, because again, it's like, it, it, it to me, it's the broad thinking tools that you're getting and you can apply and you can apply it to what you want to solve and that's what they when you go to class to me it was a little bit like Noah's Ark there's like two of these and two of those and two people doctors and this and and like they want to give you tools to get out there fast and solve world problems and that's what was so exciting to me so yeah, it's um it's it's really funny that you say that. So I actually worked this past class weekend and um I was chatting with one of the 23s and I they were working on one of their like final projects and you know, he's like, "Well, try not to bother you. We're just going to take a little, you know, like one of the little classrooms." And I was like, "You know, like what are y'all working on?" He goes, "You know, we're just we're just trying to solve the world's problems and we're trying to do it by 11:45." Like literally like those his exact words was so like we're trying to do all this stuff and you know it's it's really um it's really incredible to you know as someone who's on the program side who who sees this um and I think it's really cool that you can take all of that outside experience and then like channel all that excitement and energy and not just about stuff that you're passionate about but I think the fact that you can share this and like broaden it out where like you know you probably got um you know inspired from other things that you maybe would have never touched should you if you just had stayed in your you know current job at the time um yeah so thanks for sharing that so shifting gears a little bit because um you know olab did come up um do you guys remember your olab project and would you maybe want to share a little bit about that if it I remember <laughs> yeah, I I do, but it's, okay. it's a little it's, okay. it's a little embarrassing. Um, Nothing's embarrassing. Well, I don't know if it's embarrassing, but for someone maybe. So I, the or, O Lab is supposed to be your take all the learnings and I'll go apply it to your own organization. Well, I asked the professor, can I apply it to a problem that I see here right, uh, at school? And he's like, oh, like, tell me more. It's like, you know, like my classmates are not recycling um, I'm... and comp composting <laughs> the, the, uh, appropriately. It's like I see the, the bins being uh, filled with, you know, nonsense. So he's like, yeah, go, OK, it's like, go for it. Right. So um, the, the story is that I follow, I stayed like really late, wait for the custodians to come in and collect all the uh, the trash. And I followed uh, her down and I, I put this on video camera because you learn about, there's a concept called um, go and see, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go see. So, uh, which I learned at MIT. So, um, which was, and then so I waited for her, she collected all the recycling 
put it into a bin and I followed her down. And so she, I'm like, Hey, I know this is kind of creepy, but you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm recording you. It's like, can I just see where this goes? Like, I really want to go. And then, so I followed her out and she dumped the whole recycling full of cans and bottles into the trash, not into the recycling bin. And I, and I asked her, I was like, what the hell? Like, isn't this supposed to be recycled? And she said, well, there's a contamination issue. Like people throw food in there uh, and stuff that's not supposed to be like recycling. So if anything's contaminated, we have to throw it in the trash. Not only was the recycling bin, bin the problem was so bad that uh, it wasn't available. It was actually locked with a lock and key that you couldn't actually put anything into the, to the, the big recycling bin downstairs um, uh, at Sloan the building. So uh, that was my journey of like, all right, let's try to solve this problem. I, I don't think I succeeded. I bet it's still happening, but uh, you know, what we shall see. Um, maybe I should follow up with uh, some of the professors. Uh, please, please do. I I love that that was your whole project. That's awesome. I, I um, remember. I remember. If you want? <laughs> it's not as it's not as interesting as Kenny, but it was about. Um, it was kind of a, a systems dynamics in law, and it was just about for companies. Um, I defended a lot of class actions nationwide, and most of them are very nuisance, and the lawyers take all the money, and it's just sort of it's not productive. And so I sort of did a whole O lab on that and and what companies could do. So it was it was interesting to me, but I think um, it was very again that just shows you how narrow and unique you can go into your own world, and it it solved a lot of problems for clients that I've had. It's like, I like, I, I, when people show me their agreements, they're like, is this okay? And where's, where's your class action waiver? Like, I need to fix that. So you just don't have these, I called them, I'm sorry if anyone's family is class action lawyers. <laughs> like I call them like jekylls that like come and take money. So. <laughs> awesome. so. Cool. Um, and so uh, something else I wanted to ask is, so, you know, we do have this action learning is huge, right? At, at, MIT Sloan, where, um, you know, the goal is, again, to, like, take everything that you learn and put it immediately into action, which, again, with this program, since you are employed full-time, um, you can do. And so how did each of you integrate action learning into your jobs that you had at the time? Um, and were they the same? Like, were you, I don't think you were, but, like, what, you know, like, how exactly were you able to use everything that you took on campus back at, you know, whatever your roles were and whoever can kind of start can jump in first. I'm happy to share. Okay. Um, I traditionally sort of um, as a lawyer, you're sort of brought in later after a lot of economic decisions and decision making i noticed like more and more they're like let's get barbara in here because i would literally just start like i would get up on the whiteboard and start they're like who are you <laughs> like i would start like doing a, a decision tree or a probability diagram i'm like well like help me fill this out like where, what do you think is going to happen if we go this way and that just you just like you just start rising to the top of the pyramid with everyone because you just add so much more value, I think. To, like, And also, I mean, one, one thing that really struck me recently, I went back um, and took electives in January and I took um, finance and uh, AI. Um, and uh, when I was at MasterCard, I was a lawyer in the middle of the financial crisis. And one thing that we had said like for people when the gate came down, you are on one side or the other financially. And then, and I said to myself at that time, like that, I felt the world was changing so much that I was either going to be on the side of the gate that I understood it, or I was going to be left behind. And little did I know, so that was many years ago that I sort of had that thought. And that's what attracted me to MIT. And right now with artificial intelligence and sort of much more complicated financial transactions that are going on, like you are either going to go to MIT or a couple other schools, I think that could possibly match it, but I really don't. Um, and you will be either understanding this or not, and you will either get ahead or you'll be left behind. I really 100% believe that. Awesome, thanks for sharing that. Kenny, do you have any um, examples for action learning? <clears throat> Yeah, um, I, I think the, the, the part 
So my company was going through a reorganization and I was, uh, I was uh, driving one of the efforts there. And um, what I really did appreciate about MIT is that of course, quant, right? Mathy stuff, like engineering stuff. Yes, that you will learn all of that, including, you know, technical, you know, financial stuff. Um, and that's the way that my brain is wired. Right, because I come from technical engineering background. Um, however, there's a constant focus ar around people, uh, incentives, uh, the, the, the culture, uh, the hidden motivations, uh, ethics uh, of it all. That you, you, that that it comes to the forefront. And it's almost like the period, like at the end, end of every single class, isn't it, Barbara? Like, it was like, oh, you learn all yeah. these like cool, like formulas and math, but like, don't forget about people like that. that and I really appreciated that. Like, that is something that I think is very special uh, about the space, um, uh, uh, about the place at, at MIT, that it was always went back to uh, the human beings that are involved as part of the system. Yeah, and I, I think that, you know, because we, we do always in these events, you know, whether they're virtual or they're on campus or we're traveling, um, you know, we always focus on the mission, right? And the people at the end of the day are like what is sort of creating that, that community, right? And so, um, I really, I really will say that that that's definitely like that thread where everyone is just so co committed to that. Um, going back to that mission, um, I know both of you mentioned. I can oh, go ahead. Yeah. On, on like having gone to law school, where they tell you look to your left and look to your right, like one of you is not going to be here, and it's like cutthroat city, and like literally they like hide assignments and like <laughs> it was like wonderful but horrible I have lots of friends from law school but it's like such a different environment when I went to MIT the first book that you read assigned is and excuse my language is the name of the book it's like no assholes right because they're like you're all smart we don't want that behavior here and they really actively encourage you to work with each other and then you will see like a third of your class have teamed up and started businesses together like and i'm i'm helping so many businesses and like like that's incredible so it's it is a focus on teamwork and that the only way you're going to get to these goals i mean what part of the classes are you're not going to solve this independently you must work with others of different um uh, different backgrounds so i couldn't i couldn't agree with kenny more on that it's it's, it's a really important period <laughs> yeah yeah thank you thank you for sharing that and that's again and then going that's going back to your learning from your peers just as much as you are from the faculty right um and i and i will also mention too regarding our faculty um they really truly enjoy teaching our cohort cohorts cohorts the most because they recognize that these are leaders in you know their fields and they they too are also getting um that knowledge that they wouldn't necessarily have access to you know at the undergraduate level or even at the you know tier MBA level just because of you know again like our, that 17 years of average work experience is is super important so um that's it's really there's just a lot of knowledge in <laughs> in the building when everyone's on campus um so both of you mentioned um, a few, you know, uh, Sturman um, to an extent and um, Nelson too. Are there other professors um, or concepts or frameworks that really stood out to you in your time that you maybe use still to the, or, you know, just like think about today? Um, okay. Man, like everyone is so awesome. Uh -huh. I mean, it's it's really like it's like how do you pick a you know your favorite donut? It's like it's like every everybody's <laughs> really unique and amazing. Um, you know, but the concept that I use and I think about and appreciate uh, on an a almost like a daily basis is um, is what Georgia. Mm. Uh, 
I don't even know George's last name. Per, per yeah. yeah, you see, like you just these are like world renowned professors. It's like I don't even know her, I don't even know how to say her last name. I just, you call, just her call her Georgia. Yeah, Georgia, yeah. right? Yeah. And so um, um, so reintroducing uh, statistics in a, in a way that it's with a business lens on was actually super amazing uh, uh, to me. And that was like sort of foundational on my journey to learning about uh, 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 moving on to AI and machine learning. So that was actually really cool. And then also Professor uh, Rigoban, uh, Roberto Rigoban is, is uh, amazing as well. And he's, he's, a, he's a crazy character. He's, not crazy. He's, he's, he's an amazing guy, but he has a very loud, rambunctious personality the um, yeah, word yeah, for yeah. rambunctious <laughs> yeah and, and he's, he's a lot of fun um and he has a way of of uh injecting passion into uh the topics that uh that you're thinking about um and he was actually uh, one of my mentors during awesome. sustainability lab during s lab oh, awesome and barbara how about for you I, I feel the same. I don't really have a favorite. I have just such great memories um, of learnings and just the kindness. Like these, like like Kenny said, these are people who like are just beyond comprehension, brilliant, and have international, you know, uh, respect. And they're just they're just kind and and very. Um, they'll take the time to help you. Uh, and the classes are fun. They have good sense of humor. They keep it going. Um, it's it's great. I, 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 I had I would do it all over again. I really would. <laughs> it was really uh, amazing. So we got cut short that little bit from the yep. pandemic. So uh, that's why I would do it again. Maybe if I didn't get the shortcut of the pandemic. Well, that's why you have electives, so you can you know like come back and take yeah, advantage exactly. of that. I love the as an alum. Yeah, so. I, I in fact, I think it was Professor Ken who was the uh, who did the AI finance. I mean, I was able to walk away and talk so intelligently about the topic where everyone else, they, you know, there's hype and there's reality to this. And but you really walk like I, for me, it was like the first part of it is like, oh, wow, this is a great TED talk. And then it's like then the math comes, you know, <laughs> so it's like but you really get like sort of the general understanding, the deep understanding. And you walk away saying like, OK. I know what is hype. I know what is not hype. I know like where this is going. I know where the limitations are. So like, I'm going to keep coming as long as I possibly can and keep learning. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so before I let the two of you go, um, uh, one final question for you both. Is there one piece of advice for anyone on this call who is looking to apply? Um, we do have one last uh deadline left. Um, is there one piece of advice that you have for anyone who's, you know, thinking about applying or working on their application? Um, maybe something you wish you heard when you were um, yourself in this time thinking about it? Uh, I'll go first. I don't know. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, please. Please. Okay. Okay, I'll make it quick because I'm, I'm not sure if I'm answering the right question. I mean, I remember the application because <laughs> I would stay late at work and do everything. And I was like, I forgot how poorly I did in physics back when I was like 18 years old. And so I announced to some of my teammates that were still there. I'm like, well, I'm not getting into MIT. <laughs> so I was like convinced I would never get in. Um, I, you know, you go, you have a little imposter theory. Uh, syndrome uh, just just apply um if you get in go it's life-changing um doors that are i have right now i have five like active interviews to be a general counsel at some interesting big company somewhere and it, and i think i got a question and i'm not sure if i'm going to answer this perfectly but like am i limited to like environmental renewables no i'm getting i'm getting calls to be um Kenny would love this. We'll have to talk about it. It's a, a new technology. They're building plants where they take recycled material and turn it into few biofuel. And I would be a general count. What business do I have doing that? But I think when they see MIT and they see some other, and they're like, this girl can do anything. And I think that's the, that's what doors will open up of all kinds. So that's uh, so apply, 
and go and do it. <laughs> Love that. Kenny, how about for you? Uh, same. I mean, uh, when, when I when I was thinking about applying, I, 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 I contacted someone here in Seattle, because Seattle is where I live, and uh, had a conversation. And he's like, all right, he's like, let's just talk. But I'll just start off this conversation. It's like, I'm just going to say, do it. He's like, <laughs> this is what I'll say. Just apply. Man. It's like, and if you get accepted, just go. You'll find a way. You know, I had two kids, uh, two small kids when I applied, and when I went to school. You'll find a way. It's um, it's important to get the if you're married and or if you have a partner, it's important to get the uh, have have support and then buy in because it will take a lot of time. You'll lose nights and weekends. Uh, so just think about that. Um, but if you're if you're committed, you'll be able to do it. Um, one last thing is uh, in line with what Barbara talked about: uh, no asshole rule. Um, just just bring your most authentic self to the interview, I, like I, I know, especially if you're like mid-career or late career, you know, like some of us where we, we sort of build up this wall and it's like, oh, I gotta figure out like the right thing to say, you know, like I would tap into your inner childhood and your like your dreams and vision of the world and, and, and bring that uh, to the application and uh, uh, to the interview. Ah. Uh. I love that. I love that. Thank you both so, so much. Um, we so appreciate your time. Um, and I will actually um, throw this back to Tom, who will close us out tonight. Tom, take it away. I just want to say again, thank you, Barbara and Kenny, for your wonderful answers. We just have some quick reminders for everyone. First, we have one deadline remaining to apply for the MIT EMBA class of 2025. Your application must be in by 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on May 4th, may the 4th be with you, to be considered for this year. We also have three more events scheduled for this academic year. We'll be visiting Brooklyn and Philly next week. And on May 2nd, we have our Program Insights event on Sloan's campus, a good opportunity to visit the campus and see what it's like. And while this is the last virtual event of the year, you can view previous recordings at our website. And now I'd like to close by saying, if you want to challenge yourself and challenge convention, if you want to broaden your perspective as well as your network, and if you want to have an impact on your company, your industry, and the world, then we hope to hear from you. Once again, thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you, Barbara and Kenny. Thank you, Chrissy, Mike, and everyone have a wonderful night.